Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 5th of October. Amid escalating tensions, India calls for parity in number of Canadian diplomats. UN opposes Pakistan's plan to evict illegal immigrants. And Bangladesh, US on same page over elections, says Foreign Minister Amit new visa policy. And now for all the details. Amid the ongoing diplomatic row between New Delhi and Ottawa, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakshi on Thursday said, India has sought parity in diplomatic representation amid their interference in our internal matters and that the two sides were holding talks to ensure this. He said since the Canadian diplomatic presence is much higher, we would assume there would be reduction. He, however, did not give out more details on the timeline to achieve this. The two countries are in a diplomatic spat since Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau alleged that the Indian government is responsible for the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar on Canadian soil. India has rejected the allegations as absurd and motivated. Given the much higher diplomatic presence of Canadian diplomats or diplomatic presence here in Canada and their continuing interference in our internal affairs, we had and we have sought parity in our respective diplomatic presence. Discussions are ongoing on the modalities of achieving this. Meanwhile, the spokesperson also informed that New Delhi has raised concern about safety of diplomats with the UK on the Khalistani issue after a group of radicals prevented the Indian High Commissioner from entering a Gurudwara in Scotland. At least 14 people were killed and 102 others, including 22 army personnel, were reportedly missing in India's Sikkim state on Thursday after heavy rain caused a glacial lake to burst its banks, triggering flash floods down a mountain valley. According to state officials, around 12 to 14 workers were also stranded in tunnel of Tista Stage 3 dam, which was breached by a fast-flowing Tista River on Wednesday. The state capital, Gangtok, has been cut off by road, with the main highway linking neighboring West Bengal state to Sikkim was also getting snapped in the flash floods. Search and rescue operations were underway by a platoon of NDRF in Rangpo and Singtam towns, while three more units of the Disaster Relief Agency were en route to other affected regions. As of now, we have recovered 10 dead bodies. There are 82 missing persons which have been reported and which includes 23 personnel from army also. Uh, we are searching for them and making all efforts to trace them. And as of now, 26 persons have been reported injured also who have been given necessary treatment. Well, the spokesman for the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Kaiser Khan Afridi, on Wednesday opposed the ultimatum given by the Pakistan government to over one million Afghan refugees to vacate the country by November 1st. He urged Islamabad, which has been hosting refugees for more than 40 years, to put in place a mechanism to ensure that Afghans with international protection are not deported. He said the UNHRC stands ready to support Pakistan in developing such a mechanism. The move comes after two suicide bombings targeted religious gatherings in Pakistan last week, killing at least 57 people. The Pakistani Taliban militant group has denied any involvement. But Pakistan's interior minister has said that one of the suicide bombers had been identified as an Afghan national. Well, activists highlighted abduction, torture and killings of Baloch dissidents by Pakistan outside the UN building in Geneva recently and urged the world body to intervene. A report. Members of the Baloch National Movement organized an exhibition outside the UNHRC building in Geneva recently, raising the issue of enforced disappearances by Pakistan in Balochistan. They highlighted how Baloch activists are tortured and killed in fake encounters for demanding freedom and expressing dissent. The activists urged the UN and the international community to hold Pakistan accountable for heinous war crimes in Balochistan. उनका मकसद और कुछ नहीं ताकि लोगों को डरा दमका कर अपनी जो बलूच आइडेंटिटी के लिए जो स्ट्रगल है 
बलोच एंटेबेंट बलोचिस्तान की इंडिपेंडेंस के लिए जो स्ट्रगल है या पाकिस्तान की जबरी कब्जे के खिलाफ जो स्ट्रगल है उसे ख़त्म करने के लिए उसे क्रश करने के लिए पाकिस्तान ने मुख्तलिफ टैक्टिस आजमाए हैं वो आज तक बड़ी तेज़ी से जारी है A large number of Baloch people have migrated to Europe and other countries due to threats and atrocities by the Pakistan army. They are now raising their voice at the UN and various other international forums to get justice. Pakistan में जो नाइन साफिया जुल्म हो रहा है Baloch कोम के ऊपर, वहाँ पे इंटरनेशनल मीडिया को ना एक्सेस है, ना कि लोकल मीडिया को एक्सेस है, ना कि वहाँ पे जो इंटरनेशनल एनजीओज है वो जा सकते हैं। तो यही एक हमारे साथ मीडिया में जिसके थ्रू हम यहाँ पे जो इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी है उनको अपना आवाज़ पहुँचा सकते हैं और यहाँ पे जो आम लोग हैं जो मैसेज हैं उनको हम अपना पैगाम पहुँचा सकते हैं and weeks after the U.S. started imposing its new visa policy for Bangladeshi nationals who undermine elections in their home country, Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momain on Wednesday said there's nothing to worry as Dhaka too has a similar visa policy. Hinting at it for that move, Momain said if any country imposes sanction on Bangladesh, Dhaka will respond in the same manner. Responding to a question on the U.S. call for free and fair elections in Bangladesh, he said both countries are on the same page on the matter. Bangladesh has made it clear that it wants free and fair elections. U.S. also wants the same and will play a supportive role to the end. News agency UNB quoted him as saying. PM Sheikh Hasina's administration and several Western countries are at loggerheads over the electoral process in Bangladesh. Moving on, crisis at Sri Lanka is facing a big challenge from its largest bilateral lender, China, to secure a concrete debt relief framework as it is blocking access to desperately needed cash bailout of 3 billion US dollars from the IMF, according to a report by Nikkei Asia. Last month's mm -hmm. visit by IMF officials to the island nation seemed like a hope for the country. But IMF, which has insisted on financing insurances from bilateral lenders as a key pillar, delayed a second tranche of 330 million dollars in aid. Notably, Sri Lanka has invited China to join a committee of the country's bilateral creditors chaired by Japan, India and France aimed at drafting an external debt restructuring framework which China had rejected in April this year. And the iconic Dal Lake in India's Jammu and Kashmir, known for its serene beauty, has now become the stage for an exhilarating water-absorbing adventure, attracting a lot of enthusiasts. Take a look. Water absorbing and exhilarating adventure activity has made its debut in the iconic Dal Lake in India's Jammu and Kashmir, offering a delight to both locals and tourists alike. The unique and heart pounding recreational activity allows participants to roll inside transparent, inflatable spheres on the serene waters of the lake. This exciting addition is the brainchild of a local entrepreneur with the support from the tourism department. पहले आप जानती हैं शिकार और हाउस बोट्स के लिए तो हमारा डल लेक फेमस था ही था तो लेकिन अब जो है और एक एक एडिशन हुआ है डल लेक में अभी लोग अभी तक याद रखते थे कि हम ने डल लेक में शिकारा राइड की है अब वो याद रखेंगे कि हमने डल लेक में वाटर जॉर्मिंग की है The initiative aims to diversify the adventure options available at this breathtaking destination while prioritizing the safety and enjoyment of all participants. एक तो कश्मीर कश्मीर तो अपने आप में ही एक हेवन है और उसके बाद ये तो बहुत ही अच्छा और बहुत ही नाइस एक्सपीरियंस है मैं तो सारे टूरिस्ट को बोलूंगी कि आए और इसे जरूर एक्सपीरियंस करें टैग टीवी ब्रिंग्स यू डेली न्यूज बुलेटिन फ्रॉम इंडिया Breaking news and views from India.